is Eric Smith. Uh, right now I'm hanging out with my son Isaiah in his room and um, I just asked Isaiah to do a really quick look on a particular verse in Acts and I just want to take a moment to tell you why I'm uh, choosing this particular verse. I was online on YouTube um, watching a Christian apologet, uh, apologist um, talk about how he would answer an atheist concerning um, uh, libertarian free will or the free will of man and how God um, would have to exist um, uh, because of the free will of man. Um, putting all that aside, it was really interesting that uh, the Christian apologist in this video was saying that there were three different views. There was libertarian free will, there was determinism, and then he said there was compatibilism. And he, but he kind of sloughed off compatibilism by basically saying, yeah, God can be sovereign and man can have a will and it's compatible, but in reality, it's just determinism. So he just kind of, you know, dismissed compatibilism. But yet throughout the whole video, he gave analogies and he gave examples and um, he had some philosophical musings about it, but he never used a Bible verse. And I thought it was really interesting that the Bible itself talks about compatibilism. That's the sovereignty of God in concert with the will of man. And I want to show the greatest example of that by showing what the Bible says about that um, based on Jesus Christ's death and burial and resurrection, um, him being crucified on the cross. Acts 2.23 in the Word of God, it reads this way, him being de delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. This is Peter on the day of Pentecost, and he's talking about Jesus Christ. That's the him. And during his sermon on the day of Pentecost, in the middle of it, he says something really interesting. He says, Jesus Christ being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. The determinate counsel is God determining within himself, within the Godhead, that Jesus Christ would die on the cross. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they're in agreement there. God, the Father, in his counsel, um, before time began, determined that Jesus Christ would die for sinners. And he says it's through his foreknowledge, which means God knew ahead of time. But not just like a psychic would know ahead of time. God's foreknowledge means God is ordaining it. So we have determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. This is why Jesus Christ died on the cross. It is God's plan from the beginning. But the second part of the verse says, ye, and that's the sinners, and he's specifically talking to the people of Israel there. Ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Notice Peter is saying, you're all guilty of the death of Jesus Christ. And when he says, by wicked hands, the adjective wicked describes what they did. That's a moral judgment. Their wicked hands, they took Jesus Christ and they crucified and they, they slew him. They, they killed him. So here we have that God in eternity past planned in his infinite knowledge and wisdom to put the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, on the cross to die for sinners. So it was his plan from the beginning, from eternity past, before Genesis 1-1. That's what God planned. But at the same time, wicked man determined and decided in their own heart that they were going to kill Jesus because they didn't like the truth of his word and they didn't like him. If you go throughout the whole Gospels, um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they wanted to kill him. There was times that people wanted him to die. So when they delivered him up to the Romans and he was killed, they were doing exactly what they wanted to. In their will, they wanted to kill Jesus. But in God's plan, he planned the whole thing. He determined that Jesus Christ would die on the cross and that he would use sinful man to do it. So does man have a will? Absolutely he does. We're going to do the things we want to do and we're going to um, devise the things that we want to do in our own hearts. In fact, that's what uh, Proverbs 16, 9 says. A man will devise things in his heart, but it's that the Lord that directs his path. So at the same time, while man wants to decide to do sinful things, and those sinful things are wicked and evil, 
God still uses and moves people to use those wicked things for a greater good. Jesus Christ dying on the cross is the most wicked thing that sinful man has ever done. But God used it for good to bring salvation to the very sinners that would put Jesus Christ on the cross. Because if we were living back then, we would have been screaming, crucify him too. But in God's determinate counsel and foreknowledge, he planned all that. He planned all that so that we may be saved. But wicked hands still were part of God's plan. So there is compatibilism. There is a man that has a will. And you know what? We're going to devise things and we're going to plan things in our own heart, what we want to do. But the ultimate planner is Jesus Christ and God the Father. They have a plan that is ultimate and lovely and wonderful. And part of that plan is for sinful man to come to salvation. But they can only come to salvation through Jesus Christ. So this is Acts 2.23. Um, I want to do a quick look at, on it because, again, compatibilism is in Scripture. It's in the Bible. God is a completely sovereign God, but man still has a will, and we're still responsible for our sins even though that God is in control. And this very verse talks about the most wicked thing that man has done and that he's responsible for, but God planned the whole thing. Um, as always, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet and you like our videos, um, hit the button. If you want to leave any comments um, or questions or concerns, I would love to read them. Uh, go ahead and leave them, but please do not be profane. Please do not be snarky. We want to be Christ-like in everything we say and do. And until I no do another quick look, just remember something. God is a wonderful, powerful, awesome, gracious, merciful God but he's still sovereign and he's still in control. But that does not mean that we're robots. We're still responsible for the things that we say, the things that we do in our, in our sin nature. And that's why Jesus Christ died on the cross, because we need to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or one day we're going to be judged. And we want to give that gospel message for sinners to hear. So thank you for listening and God bless.